Hey, Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, Monday, here on the program. Back, everybody. Back with a vengeance. Although, I think I'm gone Wednesday. So that's probably going to be the day that, like, Vince McMahon resigns, as someone here noted on the board. Every time I got something to do, something happens with Vince. So anyway, we'll tell you the latest. I'm sure Mike talked about it on the last show. But uh, Vince McMahon, hush money, Wall Street Journal journalist talking about it today. We'll tell you all about that. And we've got a lot of exclusive stories here today. I got an update on Dark Side of the Ring. Got an update on John Cena and why it's likely he's not working the SummerSlam show. We've got notes on SmackDown backstage, how Vince was carrying himself in light of all of these accusations. We have some notes on WrestleMania 38. How did the show do in terms of revenue for Texas, the Dallas-Arlington region, the economic impact of WrestleMania 38? WWE always does this because they want places to bid on WWE, so they tell you how well the last show did. And so we'll give you those numbers here today. We've also got a bunch of other news. Rampage Friday night. We had uh, two great matches on the Rampage show. We had the SmackDown show, which if you watched Rampage, the main event of that show was Tony Nese and Orange Cassidy. That match went about, uh, I think, 14.58 was the exact time. 14 minutes, 58 seconds. That was over one minute more than all of the wrestling on the entire two-hour SmackDown show put together. So if you're a fan of wrestling, not the show for you. But stuff happened on SmackDown. We can tell you about that. If you want to text us, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Back in a moment, Semper Vivian Moore, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper Vivian, also WrestlingObserver.com. Got a lot to get into today. We'll talk about Vince in a second. What's so funny? Why does the show always start with you laughing? Well, you know, the last time I talked to you, you were on an adventure to go camping, and then I saw pictures on your your Twitter about you being in a legitimate bunkhouse, and I'm I'm curious because you know me, coming from that old dusty era of Jim Crockett Promotions, did you have a bunkhouse stampede? No, but let me tell you something uh, about a bunkhouse, everybody. This was a shoot bunkhouse. It was not a gimmick bunkhouse. They just put bunkhouse up there at the top. This is a shoot bunkhouse. (laughs) There were bunks in there. It was made of wood. And uh, it was... was, uh, Not comfortable? I'll put it this way. (laughs) No, I actually slept... I slept great once I actually went to sleep. But man, I walked into that bunkhouse and all of a sudden my whole... Like everything exploded. And then, uh, you know... Paisley also walked right in there, and everything exploded. Dude, that was rough. Wait, wait. For people on the radio, in in your pants or where? No, my face. Okay. It's it's like all that sawdust in there and and, uh, wood, and like as soon as I walked in, probably (laughs) mildew and probably... uh, Mold. uh, You know, yeah, probably mold on the wood that they used to make the thing. So anyway, holy smokes, that was... (laughs) It was brutal. And then, uh, yeah, it was quite a... We're going to go back. The whole the whole area, <laughs> that whole area that everybody saw, if you were on my uh, Twitter or uh, Instagram, is uh, my wife's uncle owns all this property up in uh, Port Angeles. And so that's on his property. There's a bunkhouse. He brought in some sand and made a beach for the kids. There's just woods as far as the eye can see. Like, all of a sudden I heard this sound. I was like, is that a turkey? Yeah, there's wild turkeys everywhere. There's deer, all these animals. So uh, we were, we were, uh, we were roughing it. It was awesome. It sounds pretty awesome. Now, with all that wood that's out there, does he have a cabin that, like, maybe, like, you know, with some dividing areas? So, you know, the family, well, he has, can he has be... a cabin that, that he, like, lives in. And there's, can you rent that next time? There's everything there. So, uh, yeah, I probably could, but uh, we, 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 were, we, did, we brought the tent because we were going to camp outside in a tent. But then we saw the bunkhouse, and it was like, man, we got to sleep in the bunkhouse. And after the first night, I was thinking we need to put that tent up so I can breathe. 
You got to start going hunting now? But anyway, everybody, listen, I got some scoops for you. What you got? So yesterday on uh, on Observer Radio, we were talking about Dark Side of the Ring and if there was going to be another season. And uh, as, as Dave noted, you know, the people involved said there was going to be another season. But there appeared to be absolutely zero indications whatsoever they were actually doing that season. Well, I don't know if they're actually filming the season right now, but I can tell you that they have put out casting notices for different individuals for the next season of Dark Side of the Ring. One of them, by the way, there's a casting notice out. They're looking for an actor to play Andy Kaufman. <laughs> and so I saw this this uh, this notice, and uh, it says, must look like Andy Kaufman. I laughed. So what, you're telling me you can't look like Bill Cosby if you're trying out for the Andy Kaufman role? Like, you have to look like Andy Kaufman? That's what they want? Okay, so if you look like Andy Kaufman, they're looking for someone to play Andy Kaufman. Well, But if you don't Andy- look like him, then don't, you know... So don't, don't bother showing up. Yeah, don't send because you're not going to get the role. No. If you look like Andre the Giant, you're not going to get that role as Andy Kaufman. <laughs> if you look like Alexa Bliss, don't audition. You have to look like Andy Kaufman to play the role of Andy Kaufman. Was there anyone else uh, of note that you could speak on that they are looking? No, that's for? the only casting notice that I saw. <laughs> so we, but I we think we can know- figure out what that episode's going to be about. Yes, solid, solid choice, the Jerry. Which, you know what? Hey, that's going to get eyes. That's going to get attention. It's a story that wrestling fans have heard a zillion and one times. And I don't think there's anything new on. So we'll see how many others they have and how controversial they're going to be because as crazy of a story as that is, you know, it doesn't necessarily fit in with what Dark Side for the most part, is. Now, also, I can confirm that... Being filmed right now, this actually may already be out, but I heard about it today, Peacemaker 2, and John Cena is involved. And so uh, he's he's working on Peacemaker 2 as we speak, probably. And so I presume that's why there had been discussions of him doing SummerSlam. But then he showed up on Raw to announce, Someday I'll be back! Don't know when, don't know where, but I'll be back someday. So apparently he's uh, he's filming Peacemaker, and that's why he can't do SummerSlam. So there you go, everybody. There's some breaking news for y'all. I blame WWE for that same way. The whole deal with the Rock thing happened, which we ended up with, what, Vince McMahon's egg at that pay-per-view that w- was rumored to have the Rock appearing at it. It, it's not like they overnight just decided Peacemaker 2 would be happening. And I know they were angling some things towards SummerSlam, but I always am curious as to when it's known that somebody isn't going to be able to do something and how long they decide to string things along, it's not necessarily false advertising, but it is raising hopes, like in this case with John Cena. For the first time since there, two stories on Vince McMahon's alleged hush packs were released. Wall Street Journal's Joe Palazzolo, I probably screwed up his name. <laughs> yes. And Ted Pal- Palazzolo? Palazzolo. Anyway, him and uh, Ted Mann talked about the reporting on the WWE chairman and that there might be more to come. Speaking of Busted Open Radio on Monday, they said they began working on the story in April when they first heard about the initial special committee investigation regarding an alleged $3 million hush pact Vince had made with a former subordinate. They said the reason they covered the story is that the Wall Street Journal covers public companies in the situation, quote, this is clearly a governance issue. We write for investors, and when your board of directors is investigating something like this, it is pretty interesting. They later noted their call list for these stories was over 100 people. Mann added, even though the company said the McMahon relationship was consensual, they started hearing about other issues that were not. He said the power dynamics were doing something Uh, you don't want to do but feel you have to because you want to keep your job can be dangerous for other subordinates and that public companies have taken stances against not allowing those actions to be swept under the rug. When you see that in this case, it was a total secret from the board or at least some members of the board for a long time. We find it interesting and that makes us want to go digging and find out more. If you're seeing your chief executives not only permitting this kind of conduct, but engaging and leading the way with it, that's a problem all the way down. When asked what information surprised them, Mann said the $7.5 million payout to a former wrestler was fairly eye-popping. 
Someone did the math, by the way, which I tweeted the other day. Essentially, Vince McMahon has been paying $2,000 a day for the last 17 years. $2,000 all day, every day for the last 17 years. Each and every one of those days for the last 17 years or whatever it's been, he has paid $2,000 a day that we know of. It's a figure in the murky world of NDAs that clearly suggests a big secret being kept. That was one of the red flags signaled to us. We needed to get to the bottom of what it was and what was asked for. When asked why their second report hasn't broken bigger in terms of mainstream media, they weren't sure. Well, it was Friday afternoon. that most everybody covered the first one, and there's a lot of other stuff going on in the world. And uh, more and more, et cetera, et cetera. Probably not done yet, they said. They're continuing to report the story. They don't have anything in their back pocket in terms of allegations. Nothing they have heard larger than the $7.5 million payout. While McMahon has yet to talk to the duo, Man said that if they did, they would, quote, ask why he paid all that money and whether he paid any more money. Well, that's the obvious question that won't get an answer. But you got to ask, right? That's what people exactly. say. Yeah. You got to ask. Got to. So that's the key point here, by the way, because, you know, someone over the weekend, a Vince McMahon fan, mm. was like, what did he honestly do wrong? Oh, dude. Well, I mean, <laughs> as they note right here, uh, even though the company said the McMahon relationship was consensual, they started hearing about other issues that were not. So that's what we're dealing with now. That's just one thing. Just one. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper VB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. You want to text us here today? What's on your mind, blokes? 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Text only. If you call, nothing happens. Actually, I think something does happen. I don't know what it is, so you're just wasting your time. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. At Brian Alvarez on Twitter. At Semper VV. Yes, Mike? It rings and goes to a voicemail that's filled because people have probably been trying to call for I don't years think it's and full. you've never checked. I don't think it's full. Is it never ending? Because actually, look at this. I'm going to do something here. All right. I think it'll tell me. Checking to see it's how It's actually like an there. IQ test. <laughs> I currently have uh, 108 really stupid people have attempted to leave a voicemail. How many of them are from Cumberland, Maryland's uh, 301 area code? I don't know, but there's a lot of them. And the funny thing is, uh, as I look at it here, it does do uh, it does do transcriptions of some of them. Oh my God! Can you have Fauntleroy read some? Okay, so I'll, I'll read. Uh, I'll better mute this. <laughs> I'll, okay, this is. Uh, I won't read the first and the last name, but this actually was from over a year ago. Hi, Mark. This is Chuck. You want to know how my wife was doing? She had her operation last night about 6 o'clock on her leg. If everything works out fine, I just wanted you to know. Thank you very much for being concerned. Bye. Like, clearly he called the wrong number. That's not for me. No, no. And then we have... Uh, wasn't sure which way that phone call was going to go right there. I also got this one. This was in April. Somebody, somebody called the text message line. That we have found your name and your identity involved in criminal activity. So now, in order to connect to U.S. Marshal's office, please press 1 and your call will connect it to your case concern officer. Also, please note that if we don't hear back from you, there will be some serious legal charges filed against you. Thank oh you. <laughs> that was over a year ago, so I'm clearly in big trouble by now. You never know. Statute of limitations might have uh, already been done. Doubtful. All right. What else do we have here? That was the best you got on those? From No, there's more. I just That was the first two that popped up that had transcriptions. From notes from Talent of Friday Night, it was business as usual. Vince was there running creative. Emotions varied based on different people. Nobody can imagine Vince not being there. But the reality is that most people, including those far more powerful than... This is from Dave and The Observer. Far more powerful than Vince McMahon in their own worlds would not survive the allegations... In Friday's Wall Street Journal article, one person noted that Vince was no-selling everything, quote, letting everybody know he's not blinking, and said something to the effect of, have fun, guys, have a great show, after he ended the production meeting. Hey, at least he didn't strut out on TV to get bowed to. Ugh. Although, 
Who knows? That could happen tonight. And would you expect anything else from the guy to his professional day to day activities to be anything well, other? Well, from than... a normal person, I expect something different. But not no, Vince. but exactly, he's not normal. He's he's Vince McMahon, and we would expect nothing else. And this is a lot of people have tried to turn this into. Well, if they all said it was consensual, it's like either you are being obtuse about the whole thing or you are that bright where a dehydrated baked potato uh, can figure this out better than you. This is bigger than just these women. And yes, you're exactly right. And I shouldn't say it's bigger than these women. It's because of these women. But it, they, this is a board that is made up of people that are not from this business that are going in there and not only looking at these cases, but also looking at human resources and the culture of the company. And when you have situations like John Laurinaitis having a situation where there's an NDA that Vince McMahon knows and signed off on with him at a time where he is reassigned because he got tired and wanted to become a producer, and then is put back into a position and the whole thing is it is much bigger than just, well, what if these women said it was OK, then it's OK. That's not what uh, the Wall Street Journal is looking at here. That's not what this board is looking at here. And a lot of people are breaking this down into the simplest form. How will this affect my wrestling? And what if the women said it was OK? Well, first of all, we have a situation where now it looks as though some of these things were not consensual or there may be things out there that may not be consensual. On top of all of these things, on top of the NDAs, and it's like, what are you missing? Like, what is so difficult about this? It may not remove Vince from power, but you have a situation where you have billion-dollar deals with networks that don't want to deal with getting their hands dirty with something and pouring a bunch of money into something if somebody can be removed and it would make them feel a lot better about doing it. And there's a whole situation, too, once you peel all the Vince stuff back with Stephanie and Triple H, who would likely be able to take over, or in theory, Stephanie keeps the job. But what's interesting about that to me is that Stephanie has been at the top of the talent relations pyramid. She's been in that company for a long time. She is the daughter of the boss. Her best on paper to me, and I'm obviously a layman, but her best shot to stay in power is, I know I can change this because I had no idea any of this stuff was going on. I wasn't involved with any of it. And I was completely oblivious and ignorant to all of this while it was happening. Hmm. Okay. So that would be your best shot to tell Nick Khan and everybody else who's remaining on that board. One of which came from the Atlanta Hawks. One of which came from Barstool. One of which, including the one who just quit. I guess we can't include him. That was interesting timing. There's a lot more than just, you know, the basics of this that some people, that's all they, they can look at it as. Well, we got Raw tonight. Isn't that exciting? Brock Lesnar's Brock's there. back. There you go. Brock Lesnar's back to set up that match with Roman Reigns that we've seen 65,000 times. And uh, yesterday on WWE.com, there were some other things announced for Raw. But uh, now they're gone. So I don't know what that means. They've been removed from WWE.com. So honestly, aside from the return of, of Brock Lesnar, I don't know what's happening on the show tonight. Whatever I, whatever I read last night on the show with Dave, it's not up there anymore. Let's check the WWE Twitter, which apparently I don't follow, because when I type in WWE on Twitter, nothing comes up. Maybe they blocked you. No, I do follow them. Uh, All right, let's see if they've got a raw preview. If I if I scroll down and can't find it, then I'm going to give up because if they don't well, care, I got an NXT preview. Well, you got to remember to check the Instagram too because you've been called out for not following no, the IG. I'm sorry, enough. I'm I'm a Twitter guy. Yeah, I don't see anything. See, so yeah, Brock's on raw now. tonight. That's it, everybody. You got to buy it Tune now. In that for Elon's that. bailing. Tune in for that. I'm not buying Twitter. Why? Kidding me? Clean this place up. I'd bite to shut it down is what I do. <laughs> Save a lot of people a lot of mental stress. Control your narrative has announced twenty four hour a twenty four date tour. Should we have an over under on how many dates occur? The former Braun Strowman, Adam Scher, 
took to Instagram of all things on Monday. No wonder I hadn't heard about it to announce the news. The tour will begin October 13 in San Antonio, conclude December 11 in Des Moines, Iowa. The tour is being done with the Hello Group, an international entertainment company. Cher, Flip Gordon, Weston Blake, Austin Aries, Dirty Dango, and Killer Cross are scheduled to appear on the tour. So EC3, the co-creator of CYN, said, My mission is to create memories, characters, and a platform that will last. I have seen the highs and lows of the industry, and I'm determined to make CYN a platform where those following a dream have a place to create, grow, and make a living. The events will stream on Pro Wrestling TV. CYN is consistently the most asked about promotion on our network, said Brandon Blackburn of Pro Wrestling TV. We are thrilled to give the fans what they want by taking CYN to the next phase of its evolution, which will not only star some of today's biggest names, but introduce the audience to tomorrow's stars. They also have dates July 30th and 31st in Winston-Salem and Goldsboro. Not Greensboro, Gold- Goldsboro. Greensboro. Goldsboro. Uh, yes. Well, that's what I was going to ask you, uh, because you said what? You said San Antonio, and then they had in Cedar Rapids or something like that? Des Moines. I was, I was wondering whether they were going to go out of the Midwest at all. Do they get out of the Midwest and Southeast at all for these I shows? I don't know. Or are they all... I just know what it says here. Hmm. It begins October 13th. I guess I could probably go to his Instagram. Maybe there would be more information there. Nope, not going to do it. Nope. Seem to be like Slidell, Louisiana. and uh, sure It's here somewhere. I'm sure several splats and sp- spots in Florida would be perfect for them. Splotches in Florida. Person's like never that. heard of Goldsboro, North Carolina. Well, where have you been, brother? If Crockett didn't run a house show there, it didn't exist. Goldsboro, North Carolina. Yeah. It is a city in North Carolina. <laughs> Thank you. Goldsboro, which was originally Goldsboro, is a city and county seat of Wayne County, North Carolina. Population 36,437. So there you go. Any other uh, details on the uh Well, the unemployment numbers? rate is 5.6%. Ooh. I can give you the area codes if you want them. It's rough. We What's the weather actually, like? Sales tax, 6.75%. So yeah, there's a there's a lot of stuff in Goldsboro. It exists. And we'll be back to talk Rampage and SmackDown after the break. Observer Live. Joe Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Marcella here says, hey, Brian, kind of unrelated, but to show how good a worker Andy Kaufman was, my mom hated him. We're talking foaming at the mouth heat past his death and into the 2000s because of his intergender wrestling championship run. She thought for the most part it was real. Well, you know, he convinced a lot of people that a lot of stuff was real. That's true. And the fact that for those people that hated him, especially in Memphis, that they were getting made fun of by him on a regular basis, they probably hated his comedy as well. So to see him on Taxi, to see him in his adventures on Saturday Night Live or doing ridiculous things on shows like Fridays and work shoots and things like that, they probably, it was just an extra layer that this guy would come to your town and call you out for being toothless, redneck, inbreds, and everything else who followed Jerry the King Lawler. Hey, you know who else else came out and called the people toothless, inbreds, or whatever? Lacey Evans yeah. turned heel on SmackDown. And uh, I don't know why I bite sometimes, but I think it's probably because I don't think this guy's a troll. I think he's just kind of, you know, you know what I'm saying? But uh, he couldn't understand why I wasn't angry about this. He, like, listens to every show. It's like, how do you listen to every show but not actually listen? I said on Monday, on Monday's show, when I was recapping the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, I said Lacey came out and nobody cared. Nobody cared about her at all. And anytime she tried to climb, they booed. So at this point, you may as well turn her heel. Did I not say that on this show? On this very show that you're listening to right now on Monday? Yes, I did. So in fact, when I said regarding her turn on 
Friday. Ah, who cares? It's not inconsistent. It's consistent. Because here's the deal. They're incompetent. Do you understand? They don't know how to tell stories. They don't know how to make baby faces. You had you had the easiest, the absolute easiest baby face character in Lacey Evans. After she did five weeks talking about her military career, her battles with drug abuse and and her fathers. Her fathers and and suicide in the, the whole nine yards. You had the easiest baby face that ever got dropped in your lap, dropped in your lap. But you're so dumb that you couldn't figure out how to do a baby face runner with her before you turned her heel. Bro, I know this is the Kurt Angle sort of deal, but you know what? You can do that whenever you want. What you should do is see if you can get her over as a baby face based on her life story first. And then... Later, you can turn her heel. Well, they're so stupid that they couldn't figure out how to get her over as a baby face. People were already booing her three weeks in. So you know what? Who cares? Turn her heel. Which they did. She cut a great heel promo because they know how to get heat. You just call all these people at SmackDown stupid and they bite. They go, oh, boo, we're not stupid. Hook, line, and sinker. So anyway, great. Whatever, who cares? She wasn't over as a baby face at all because they don't know what they're doing. You know what's funny? You ever thought about the fact that the guy at the very top is embroiled in scandal and he can't figure out, he can't figure out how to book a nice person? You ever thought about that? Hmm. Well, I've thought about it many times. Now, the other day, somebody was like, I think it was uh, Sean Ross Sapp may have uh, tweeted out that Vince has to go. And there were people like, oh, my God, I can't believe he said he's got to go. I'm like, what? Bro, I've said this guy's got to go before any of this happened. I've been saying it since 2018. Golly. Who wound me up that time? Wasn't you for once. (laughs) Well, I mean, look, from from a creative point of view, and from a atrophying fan point of view, because people will talk about the ratings, look at the last 10 years. Look at how many stars they've built. Look what they have to go back and constantly do over and over again. And the thing with WWE is it's always a pretty simple fix because they have the access to some incredible talent. And there's going to be talent that gets over in spite of how poorly they're booked. Whether it be, you know, Bianca Belair was unsinkable i mean there's no period rhea ripley as bad as she's been booked since day one of being brought up to the main roster and being timid about poor charlotte flair when you have a woman that looks like a killer at a time where you need stars and all you got to do is go hey competition but they couldn't do that they had to play a story where they lose and, and like Liv morgan over and over and over again they lose because that's what's going to get them over I hope they don't think that the cheers that Liv Morgan gets is because they were successful with what they've been doing with her. It's because fans really like her and they actually want to see her be in a good position. Dude. Not because your crappy booking had her beat over and over again where she comes out going, you know, I know I'm a loser, but if I get one more shot, man, maybe this time I can get it. Bro. Like, it's really tiring for you know, fans to hear from a baby. Fan. When she came out on that show last night and they used the line... The eternal underdog. I was like, dude, She's you got the know, belt. bro, that's the only thing you know how to book is an underdog. Someone who always loses. Yeah. They lose and lose that's and not, lose and lose. Thing, and finally that's... you throw them a bone so everyone chants you still got it. And then they're a baby face for like four weeks. And then you take the title off them and turn them heel. But that's not what makes an underdog. Like an underdog I know that. Is, uh, but that's like that's the you know the, the well no it is an underdog too. it is an underdog because when you book someone to always lose yeah they're an underdog because well, they're, they're, they never they're win always a betting underdog but yes. like an underdog is usually somebody who's plucky who gets wins who is always hanging in there I mean there's all these positive attributes that this person has that aren't overshadowed by the fact that they tend to lose all the time and they're a loser and they can't get over the hump and whatever it is and they're not a star. This is why we have Brock Lesnar coming back tonight when it shouldn't be this way. You know, you've had all these people. Madcap, 
Think about how long Riddick Moss has been there. Think about what that guy looks like. Think about the athlete that he is. And no, it was not going to be overnight because he came from the NFL and there was a lot that guy had to learn about wrestling. And I don't know, you know, again, working in WWE, how they do their matches. I'm not sure what he's picked up, but he's picked up enough of the WWE style that you know of to know he can go out there and be functional. How long has this guy been spinning wheels there? And now they kind of sort of have some idea on what to do with him. And he's kind of gotten a good reaction when he's poked his head out there. But like, yes, they still need to call him Madcap. But how long ago could you have been building a guy like that? You would have been about a lot better off <laughs> than where we're at because you would have already been a star. Bruh, Riddick Moss has been there as long as Aaliyah. You know, Lee has been there for nine years. Nine, nine years. Nine, nine years. years. Did you watch the show on Friday, everybody? I did. There were so many geeks on that show. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. Aaliyah was a geek. The New Day. The New Day, everybody. The New Day comes out, and uh, the new violent Viking Raiders are in the ring. I should save this for the Tom show, but I'm going to get some of it out now. The new violent Viking Raiders, which we have to be alerted every time they come out that they're violent. Because you, the viewer, are dumb. You're not going to get it if they don't tell you every single time they're on screen that they're violent. Just like you're not going to get that he's frickin' if they don't tell you every single time he's on screen that he's Seth frickin' Rollins. He's not just Seth Rollins, everybody. He's Seth frickin' Rollins. You got it? Freakin'. No, frickin'. Freakin'. Is it freakin'? Freakin'. Who cares? One way or the other. Man, they've done such a good job, I got it wrong. But anyway, maybe I'm dumb. So anyway, freakin' Rollins... And then uh, the new violent Viking Raiders, they come out and the new day, they're in the aisle and they're just making one joke after another. And then they challenge the Viking Raiders to a fight. They jump in the ring and immediately get their ass kicked, beaten down, pummeled, and humiliated. I was like, God, <laughs> you can't even book the new day as baby faces. They picked a fight and got destroyed by the new violent Viking Raiders. Freaking dumb is what it was. You know, 13 sure minutes of wrestling on a two-hour wrestling show. It was 13 minutes plus before you actually got any anything new out of that show because they started with video packages and Roman Reigns and the Usos and Paul Heyman walking out to the ring. Then they go to break. It was like damn near the 15-minute mark of that show before Roman Reigns, after milking the crowd for a little bit, began speaking. It was really something else. And I know Phil. I do Tom, think that his uh, entrance was longer than all the matches on the show put together. It's 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 actually, I love it. it the longer it gets, it, it might as well be part of the gimmick now to see exactly how slow. It's like, I know this reference won't mean anything to you it was like lee smith walking out of the bullpen like they would time it it would take him like seven minutes to walk not that far but the natty illuminati thing i'll, I'll you know i'm sure tom will have a nice play on those words from Rhonda. but Rhonda said she was there and she was not dressed to wrestle which okay fine you know a lot of people walk around in athletic gear i could see her doing that same thing it was a shirt and yoga pants i can buy but my, that but my question is you're walking around with that eye makeup all the time well apparently yeah yeah she is you know the other thing on the show that was so funny only in wwe all the stand up and the the bowing blokes you know they're okay with this but we advertise a match for the entire show drew mcintyre and sheamus and then they come out to the ring and sheamus goes <coughs> I think I got the COVID. Can't wrestle tonight. So then he puts in uh, old Pete Dunn. Butch. Pete Dunn. And, uh, you know, there's there's part of me that thought, if, if Drew and Pete Dunn would have gotten 18 minutes, I'd have been fine with that. But they went one. And Drew claymores him. And then he takes his big sword. He's got that big sword. And he chops the top rope. And listen, it's one thing to do a goofy spot where, like, he chops the top rope and the rope snaps and everything like that. They've done that before. But, dude, he takes it. And by, and by, by the way, by the way, before I go any further, he grabs that elongated weapon. And as God is my witness, on a stack of Bibles, on a stack of Bibles, I think it was Corey said uh, he's got Angela. And then Michael Cole screams at the top of his lungs, his sword. You people think I was joking. I'm not. 
in WWE, in the WWE Universe, it's not a sword. It's a sword. You have to pronounce it sword. Like Seth freaking Rollins. It's a sword. Michael Cole interjected himself to, to alert us that Drew had his sword. So anyway, he takes his sword and he hits the top rope. He uses the flat side, by the way, because he actually bent his sword. That sucks, let me tell you. And uh, the rope not only snaps, but then on top of that, fire shoots out of the post like Kane showed up. I got to admit I laughed. It was so preposterous. What? You have a sword. You try to decapitate Sheamus. You miss and you chop the top rope. But then, for reasons unknown, the posts, the metal posts blow up. They exploded. Why? Why did that happen? Are the ropes like electrical cables? Do they carry electricity to the, uh, you know, those, uh, what are those things on the side of the, the, the ring? Those, uh, you know, boards, those Dasher LED boards. boards? Yeah. Uh, are, are the, are the ring ropes actually like electrical wires that, that fire up those LED boards? Is that uh, why when he chopped that thing, the posts <laughs> exploded in flames? Well, maybe he cut it and it set off the pyro. Those all malfunction. There's that way no that pyro in do. the poles. Kane hasn't been there for years. He's a mayor now. I got to go. Observer Live. Back of the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, VV, also WrestlingObserver.com. Hey, are you a subscriber to WrestlingObserver.com? How about video.f4wonline.com? Because if you're not, you're missing out. Today, 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern, myself and G1 participant and superstar Filthy Tom Lawler will be doing our weekly show. We're going to talk New Japan Strong. SmackDown, all about SmackDown. I didn't even touch on, I didn't even touch on Maximum Male Models. We'll do that on the show today. And uh, also some stardom. I'm not sure how much Tom has watched. and I probably am only getting to the main event of the pay-per-view, but we will talk some more stardom on the show today. And then Tom's off to Japan, so we're going to have to do shows remotely from Japan over the next, uh, like, eight weeks or however long he's going to be gone. He's gone for a while. I think till the end of August or something like that. But anyway, it's going to be uh, very exciting. That's video.f4wonline.com for video, wrestlingobserver.com for audio, and uh, you also get uh, all of these shows, 13,000 archived shows dating back to 2005. That's a lot to listen to on your next road trip out to the Olympic Peninsula to sleep in a bunkhouse. <laughs> and then my wife's uncle, who was a former chef, just cook all weekend. Wait a second. Yeah. Holy smokes, did we eat. Now, was he like a real chef or was a he working chef. at like Olive Garden? Or no, he, was, okay. he was a real deal, dude. Damn. Man, it was great. So Eat. anyway, we're going to wrap it up. Hey, Mike Solo Wednesday, but I'll be back tomorrow. So what? I, oh yeah, it's NXT day again. Sorry, brother. Well, anyway, maybe you can get a co-host. Maybe Filthy will be available for one more day. But anyway, I'll be back tomorrow to talk Raw, everyone's favorite show of the week, The Raw Report. And I'll be back tonight with Dave. Got a lot to get into. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.